Welcome to uh, Signalus headquarters in Berlin. Uh, my name is Mark Johnson, and this is my colleague Jake. <laughs> Yeah, so, um, yeah, short about the agenda, because the uh, time frame is a little bit short. Um, we're short going to present the, um, the, about the uh, economy and what we're doing. Um, and then I will give you a short crash course in non-presented service. Um, this is going to be too short to, to present that in detail, but uh, to see what we're actually trying to achieve with uh, Jiro Conference, you kind of need to lead a little bit of background knowledge. And um, in the end, you will see how that looks like in the um, customer portal uh, from the um, Jira service desk. Right, Zignavio. Um, Zignavio was founded um, in 2009, a little bit more than uh, 10 years ago, by uh, four students. It was a student startup. And um, now um, we're kind of um, growing really fast. And this number of employees is not even true anymore. We're about five, 400 now. And uh, we have offices in uh, the US, in uh, New Boston, uh, Melbourne, Paris, London. And um, yeah, and what we're doing is, um, thank you. Um, our product is uh, a business transformation suit. It's consisting of the process manager, the workflow accelerator, the process intelligence, and the hub, which is collecting everything. And um, yeah, the, the process manager is mostly about um, capturing your business processes and see where you can improve it. And um, also share information about in your whole company on how the process in your company is actually working. Um, In addition to that, uh, we have the workflow accelerator where you can actually use these kind of processes and put automatic tasks behind it. For example, we have a order management where the uh, order is getting in, uh, data is checked, and then uh, by a push of a button, it's automatically forwarded to our or mailbox. So we know that we're going to deliver the license to the customer. And um, this is all built up based on a VPMN process. The third part is the uh, process mining part, the process intelligence, where you can actually um, mine the complete data from, from your, um, example, Salesforce to see where, how your order process is actually running, because there is always a little bit of a gap between the concept of your process and how it's actually done by the employees. Like, are there steps which are skipped or um, uh, always take too much time? that you can use to drill really down to the, to the second to see where you waste time or money or need more employees. And the last part, which connects all of that, is the collaboration hub, where you can um, share all those information and processes so everyone in your company can see it and is informed about um, your processes without having uh, to, to need to know too much about it. Yeah. So that was a crash course about the company. Um, this is yeah the whole two uh, portfolios used by um, a big number of companies. Um, I guess yeah everyone knows all these uh, from Germany, please. And so let's get to the core of our uh, presentation. So um, it's uh, we Jade and I were working in our support department and using Jiro Confluence to uh, provide service to our customers. And um, when I started like five years ago, it was like we were three people, we were 65 people in the company, it was quite easy to share knowledge and communicate between each other on uh, uh, different topics, but now we're like 13 to 15 in three offices around the world, so it's going to be a little bit different and difficult to actually have everyone on the same page. So we started to have uh, discussions about how to, to build up a knowledge base, keep safe knowledge somewhere so we can first of all capture the knowledge so we don't forget it, we can offer it to customers so they can help themselves and um, uh, yeah, and lower our, our case numbers. 
And, uh, but we all, know, we all knew that this classic knowledge based approach, like sit down and think about what, what are we going to do to help the customer, to, to imagine what the customer could have issues with. And we knew this, this program can work because uh, this starts really well because you have your basic problems and uh, the normal um, issues everyone, every customer faces. But after that, what do you write about? And no one is visiting a knowledge base with like 10 articles. So uh, we looked around about uh, different approaches to the knowledge base, and that's when we uh, stumbled upon KCS, Knowledge Center Service. And that um, was uh, kind of exactly what we needed, because... Um, one more. Uh, the core principles about KCS is um, you create knowledge base articles when you get the request. So when the customer is calling, you start to, to create the article, or when you get the ticket, uh, you write at least a problem description. So you already have that in the knowledge base, and the customer is providing you with um, the use case and uh, the problem they're facing. Um, and what you can also do is you, you capture the article in the way the customer describes it. Because we all have te super technical knowledge and language, no customer understands, or if you. So um, that's uh, yeah. We also keep a simple structure because uh, yeah, you probably know that when you have a problem, you search for a solution. You don't want to read a book about it. You want to, you don't you want to have a page. You want a quick and fast solution uh, or a way to solve the problem. And what's also one of the core principles of KCS is uh, you only improve articles which you uh, use often. So as soon as you use it again, you go in there and check if the quality is good or if you can improve it in any way. In that way, um, the knowledge base articles which are used a lot have the best quality. The uh, knowledge base articles which are used almost never or never, um, you don't waste, waste time on. So, um, Thank you. Wow. <laughs> so that's why uh, KCS is, of course, this is something where you have to you have to change your whole workflow in the support area. But um, it, it looks like a little bit of more work. But uh, in the long run, you realize how much knowledge you actually save and how much that helps to onboard new people. Um, answer uh, like the, the most common questions from customers you always get, especially from new customers, always have the same basic default questions. And um, how that actually looks like, my colleague will present to you. So, thank you so far. Thank you. Stanley Brooking. Um, so we have a quick use case, just a simple one, just to show you how we integrated uh, KCS into Jira and Confluence. And this is just a test ticket that I just created for me. Um, what you can see is like um, we get those uh, cases, our tickets via email or via requests in our support wall, which I will just show later on. Um, but this is basically how it looks like um, with the service that we are working with. And what we can actually do is um, when we have a request of the customer or a partner, we can just check if we have a KCS article um, regarding to this topic or if we have none of this. Um, what we can basically do is search for knowledge base articles or create a new one. So what we do actually is just like we can directly from the case um, create a new ticket or a new AB article um, that will directly with the AP. RPE um, get transferred to confluence. And how this looks like will be showing here. So this is a simple um, yeah, um, KPI tickle that we just had in the past. It's just simple, um, well, for us, it's like, where can I learn the first steps in Signavio, which is a pretty common question. And just to get us away from the daily work, um, <coughs> users can find us actually in the knowledge base. Um, this is how it looks like, how we implemented it. It's a, um, yeah, divided into several sections, the internal ones, before we approve them internally with an extra team, and uh, publish them to our users so that they can actually find them. 
Um, what we do is we implemented some buttons here with like the script runner um, applications that you can have for um, the Atlassian services um, just to, yeah, make it easier for employees just to work with the KCS principle. Um, what we have is like um, the problem description and a short answer to this. So this is the basic picture on how it looks like. And what we have is, as a screenshot, because of sensitive data, how the case actually looks like when it arrived uh, on our way. So this is the case, actually, that we have as a driver ticket that this knowledge base article is based on. And now, for the last part, we will just show you how it looks like in the Cosmo portal. Well, this portal is now under construction, so it will be remade a lot prettier. Um, this is how it looks for our customers. Um, so here they can create tickets or uh, modeling questions directly and be pre-selected on which products they use. And if I now want to know the first steps in Signalio, I am, for example, directly lead to this article that we just talked about. And just to get to know the customers better, we can also have um, different labels for the customers because every um, customer will search for problems differently and just to find the same results with like different words and launches. So yeah, that's a quick example of how we work with the KCS in the practical use. Besides the buttons, what's the difference compared to the normal Jira and Knowledge DB? Um, you mean the approval buttons here? I, I cannot see any difference besides those buttons. But it's a use case. <laughs> it's just it? a use case. It's yeah. like um, where we were to click those buttons. would be a solution. Pardon? I understood you deliver it an additional solution. No, 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 no. Um, they are just exactly like, how you the, can do the script the is running, um, especially like if we write them internally, huh? um, we will just check them before we publish them to, to our customers. And actually we have different uh, kind of languages, so we have some buttons to just categorize them in an English direction to just, um, yeah, just help the Germans one away from uh, the English to, to um, higher the satisfaction, actually, for your search results. And, um, well, it's a little script that's just saying it's approved, it's only visible for internals or for customers, has this and this labels and erase, like, the internal labels that we have there. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Do you have a concept or how do you um, uh, sort them, label them, so that it uh, makes sense? Do you have any uh, concept of doing that? Um, actually, the, the concept that we are following is to um, have the role of the customer, how the customer will search for the problem. Um, usually, the customers don't know the, the solution already, so basically what they're looking for is the problem that they have, and we are trying to have a lot of labels that are covering those uh, search requests. If you make them up as you... As exactly, you exactly. Uh, or if you, if you uh, as Marcus already said, if you just find and use this article, like for another customer, you can also use like um, the request from the next customer to improve your own labels to uh, even yeah, have more labels in the future, so more customers will find them. Um, do you have an example how to develop that knowledge once the ticket comes up again, or once you see that an article is used? More yeah, actually um, what we do is, um, once a ticket is created for us, um, we go to our knowledge base, which is a separate part, a section in, in Confluence, and what we actually do is uh, search for it. So if we have ourselves uh, the article, for ourselves, mm -hmm. um, then it's good. If it's not there, we create it. And if we have, for example, a duplicate, we need to improve the other one. So what Markus mentioned in his uh, principal discussion that, that KCS also includes uh, something of a life cycle. So if you see that an, uh, an article has, more, has a higher importance, you invest more work. Uh, if you see that an article turns up more times, you work with it. How do, do you have any statistics that you see how, how many how often something is used or how does that life cycle work? Um, yeah, we have statistics, but um, not in Confluence or Jira. That's done with Google Analytics. 
and um, you um, get yeah, and you kind of get to to know it's um, which articles are coming up the most. Because okay. yeah, we are thirty to fifty people. That's uh, something where you have a little bit of more communication. Mm -hmm. So what do you do with that information when you know this article is seen very often? Um, first of all, we communicate it to the team as a motivational tool for the, for the methodology. Um, but apart from that, there is uh, not so much to do, um, because every time that the article is used, it gets improved if improvement is needed. But uh, apart from that, you can't do that much. Okay, because the article is tied to the Jira ticket that gets created yeah. once a user has the same question again. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. maybe that doesn't apply to you, but maybe it's um, interesting for the audience that we do. We have pretty much the same approach. But what we do with the statistics on uh, article use yeah. is um, we'll see that uh, we can eliminate the most used articles um, every quarter in terms of by implementing it product as people don't stumble at those places anymore or if it's an addition error message or more detection the product um, of the environment uh, to avoid those things. Yeah, um, of course, um, that, that's, that's the thing uh, to communicate it to the developers, um, but it's not that easy to just get it fixed. Okay, okay. other questions? questions? Yeah. Is there any out-of-the-box analytics for confluence? Yeah, there it is. Yeah, there is actually. Um, the issue is, uh, you probably know that from other pages, uh, when you read the knowledge base article, the bottom there's a question, did this article help? How many times have you clicked on the thumb? Okay. Yeah, that's, that, that's like the only analytics you have right now, and um, it's rarely used. Exactly. So it's not clicked on Yeah. Because yeah, I know for myself, I read through the article, I try it in parallel, it works, I close the window and start. Yeah. Um, there is um, a couple, of, you can also see in the um, Jira service desk um, some. Somehow often an um, article has been displayed and also an estimation of how many cases it avoided. Uh, that might be worth looking at, uh, but it's not great. Yeah, but it gives you an indication at least. Um, like, like he said, for example, what do we do as well is just have a Google Analytics tracking code uh, on the page. That's essentially a, a free solution. If you want something in Confluence, um, what I've seen um, uh, some other partners use um, is a app called View Tracker, I think it's called. Um, that gives you actually um, relatively nice uh, views and analytics and that stuff within Confluence. So if you're space admins, if you're those people, um, if you want them to uh, be able to look at it and use it and not someone who knows Google Analytics, um, then that might be an app. And there are two, three more which I don't know, so can't. Maybe the partners here can give some more advice. <laughs> yeah, there are simple solutions such as, such as you mentioned, a view tracker which is an add-on for Confluence that, that allows you to track views and, and impression by users, named users, or like if it's, if it's public, in you know, the best case, you don't know who the user is. Um, and there is uh, like for more privacy concerned customers, um, you can also integrate something like Pity, uh, like, like on-prem Google Analytics alternatives, for example, which is really like web tracking to a degree. Or you use like archiving, which is like tracking the quality of the content and just like notifies you or you can apply like rules, has not been viewed like for a year and has not been uh, edited for a year or something. Um, which one was that? I didn't know. Archiving. 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 So we are using this for, for, for eBay that to remove the obsolete content, which no one wants to have that in their own confluence, especially for us when we have like 10,000 of pages, hundreds of spaces, then you just can click and see all the results at once, the quality of your content, and automatically archive them and so on. It's quite a sophisticated other, but it's quite cool, and I think it's the most important item for enterprise level company. And you can tell people to review. Yes, yes. Also. after a certain time. Uh, if they didn't leave the company. Yes. <laughs> 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 right.
Any more questions? Good.